1981, four months to go for the Mr. Olympia. My fiance, the girl I was gonna marry, left me for my training partner. And I was shocked, I was startled. I'm like, oh my God, four months to go, I can't train, I'm, I'm messed up. I'm hurt and somehow I go, I, go, I gotta get through this. I wanted to go over and just kill the guy. And for some reason that year, all the hurt went into my training. I just opened the door up to Gold's Gym, my arms would grow. Every exercise that I did worked greater than ever. Anything negative that happened to me turned out to be an opportunity in disguise. And I look at life that way. Nobody is, has an easy life. Life will drive you down to the ground, like squatting. I learned about life in the gym. Everything I know about life, I learned in the squat rack. I learned how to fail in the gym. I learned how to fail and fall on my face many, many times. You never read about it. Nothing, nothing's like squats. You can do leg presses, but why? Why do an inferior movement? Why do a movement that where it looks good, but it produces hardly any result. Come on! Yeah. Come on. Okay. Congratulations, you achieved failure. Failure has been achieved, thank God. Now, the only place to go from failure is to win. Nobody wants to go that far, it's too scary. Nothing's changed since the 70s. Nothing, except people train not as hard. I mean, there's a reason people don't squat. It's hard, it's hard. People don't want what's hard, they want what's easy, what looks showy. That is the secret, absolutely. When I was a young man, I said that I will not be a victim to my genetics. I will not be a victim to my genetics. I don't care. I don't care, I, have a, I don't have a small waist. Hell with it. My genetics will be a victim to me. That was my, my plan. And it was my, my, God gave me this mentality. However, Tom Platz did have one thing that ended up bringing the stands to their feet wherever he went, and that was legs and balls. God gave me the leg thing. I, I, I gotta tell you, most of those squats I did, I wasn't doing it. It wasn't me, it was God finishing the last 10 reps, okay? Because I, I don't know, I, I was done. I don't know where it came from. Yeah. Some, God was pulling up that weight. I learned about life in the gym. Everything I know about life, I learned at the squat rack. I learned how to fail in the gym. I learned how to fail and fall on my face many, many times that you never read about. Exaggerate, every time. Higher. Never, never relax. Okay. Tom Platz, with his 90 kilos of weight in peak condition, his Herculean proportions, his blonde hair and overflowing sympathy, represents the real embodiment of one of the exemplars of the American dream. For this reason, he is probably one of the most influential bodybuilders in history. Thomas Stephen Platz was born in Oklahoma on June 26, 1955. Nicknamed the Golden Eagle, he received a weight machine his father bought from Joe Wader on Christmas 1965. Tom started training in the basement of his house, then competed as an amateur until he won the World Amateur Championships. And then, since going pro, for the next nine years, he competed as a pro for one purpose only. Winning the Mr. Olympia, and it is from that year that begins the real obsession of Tom Platz to get to touch the sky of bodybuilding. Remember also that every man in this competition is already a world champion. Tom Platz, who had entered the world of bodybuilding as a complete unknown, wins the Mr. Universe and begins to prepare for the Mr. Olympia of 1980, his second Mr. Olympia before jumping to stardom. The year 1980, a young Tom Platz appears on the Mr. Olympia stage the same year Arnold announced his return from retirement. This Mr. Olympia will ring a bell for many because of the great controversy about the final results. Joe Wider's company gave his winner an Arnold who was not at all in his best version. 
This made that bodybuilders like Frank Zane or Mike Menzer ended up boycotting the IFBB's decision, which made them announce that they would not present themselves at the next year's Mr. Olympia. And this event put Tom Platz even more in the spotlight because he became a real option to be a winner of the most prestigious contest in bodybuilding. Aware of the opportunity that was presented to Tom, he decided to bet everything on that next year. Life seemed to be smiling on him. He had previously moved to California to be more in touch with his idols and ultimately with Gold's gym bodybuilding. The Golden Eagle could make history. The best legs had a real shot at being Mr. I used to be. You know, I moved out to California. I moved out in 1978 with 50 bucks and a plane ticket. And that's all I had to my name. I lived with 25 people across the street from the gym. And I dreamed. And I, and I every day, and I still do about winning Mr. Olympia. You can't talk to the audience, but you, you talk to them with your movement pattern. And that's what I'm telling them. I'm telling them about my life, about the beach, about some of the women in my life. And I'm sharing that with them. When you give to an audience, they give back to you, and you all leave that much higher. That's my thrill. That's my thrill. The real competition is between you and yourself in the gym preceding the event. If I thought about Lee Haney so much, and thought about Mike Christian, and thought about Zane, I'd go crazy. The contest is between me and myself. I love the gym, and I love the office. So I feel that you've got to be an athlete, and you've got to be a businessman as well. You've got to be able to juggle those things. Corvette uh, at the moment, which is which is my baby. Going to the gym in the morning and feeling the sun starting to get a little hot, and uh, just the feeling of, of California, of the beach. You can hear the beach, you can see the beach, you can smell the air. You know how when you see a girl for the first time. But when everything was going better than ever, when it seemed that Tom Platt's time had come, life smiled on him. He was in a good moment on a personal level in his best moment on a professional level. But just before facing his biggest challenge, his fiancée betrayed him, and he was left with a very difficult situation to overcome, only four months away from the Mr. Olympia. My, my girlfriend, Corinne, left me for my training partner. It devastated me, it rocked my world, it hurt me so bad. Yes, yes. It's how what was going to be Tom Platt's best year turns into a real hell. He suffers this abandonment which doesn't sink him but rather makes him even more powerful. All that pain he unloaded in the training sessions prior to the 1981 competition. To such an extent did he take advantage of those training sessions that he presented the best physique we have ever seen from Tom Platts to date. It was his championship, he had a real chance of winning it. He was up against none other than the returning Franco Colombo. Also on that line were Chris Dickerson and Danny Padilla. And if we look at Franco Colombo's Unavuno against Tom Platts, we see how all the lateral poses are Tom's, some historic leg cuts, an upper body with a lot of depth in each of his cuts. On the other hand, we see in Franco Colombo legs that cannot compete with Tom's legs. In addition, in his torso, he has a slight gynecomastia that clearly detracts points. But if we remember the conjecture in which we find ourselves, the year 1981, the year after Arnold's controversial Mr. Olympia, Franco Colombo was his best friend, the man who filled the covers with him. It was a comeback. History was coming true again. The IFBB that had already been boycotted, the awarding of the Mr. Olympia to Franco Colombo and Tom Platz would never again present a physique like that year. 
porque existe outro querer. I went to the gym and my ex trading partner and my ex fiance were kissy face huggy bear in the gym and I'm there there at the same time with me. Use this hurt as fuel, as energy. I decided to take all that energy and put it into the gym. I would train like every day, and every day look better and better. I'm in the mirror, I'm scared of myself in the mirror. Look at training as uh, something that builds character, work ethic. Look at training as something that really builds confidence. Look at something that, training that shows you how to fail and how shows you how to get up and win. There's much more to bodybuilding than just building muscle. Character building, uh, confidence. Uh, integrity, uh, how to lose, how to win, uh, the work ethic. That's bodybuilding as far as I see it. The next few years of his competitive career, Tom Platts would not match that third place finish in 1981. But it is true that from that moment on, once everyone learned of his work ethic, his mentality... Tell me, what's, what's the most exciting moment of your life can you recall anything have you, have you ever have you ever stood there and cried and choked up or oh, what's the most thrilling moment of your entire life as far as competition as far as i suppose body. it would have to be connected with bodybuilding 86 olympia yeah my place my lowest as a result of the show i was able to go out there I was able to walk to the front of the stage. I was able to have people look at me and their eyes opened up. Everybody in the audience stood up and yelled something. I don't know what it was. And they yelled, put their arms up, and nobody was on the earth. Everybody was just like spiritually and mentally not on the earth. It was the most incredible, the most meaningful experience ever in my life. Money can't buy that. I didn't get the title, but I touched that. And when you touch that, 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 that was Conjure up those 
feelings, you know, and those commitments that you gave to yourself and you promised yourself, you fucking promised yourself to be the best fucking person. That, that is what makes you true. That is what makes muscles grow. Nobody fucking knows the secret. That is it. I have no fucking genetics. If you got that and genetics, you'd be a fucking superstar. And after scheduling his retirement, Tom Platz's name still rings out in every gym in the world today, especially on leg days, because of his unique training method. He said you had to forget about weight. He prioritized his squat technique more than anything else. He said that our mind and our physical ability don't go hand in hand. That when our legs can still keep pulling, there is a mental barrier that tells us not to keep going. For this reason, Tom Platz talked about counting five repetitions at a time. In this way, we remove the mental barrier that prevents us from continuing with our sets. Today there are so many famous competitors who come to him to see where the true limit of their capabilities lies. We are not used to going 100%, and Tom Platz is the world's first way to unlock failure. I want you to do what you normally do. I'll critique a little bit, maybe make a few adjustments. Mm -hmm. When it comes time for that one set, you know, when you think you're done, totally done, you have at least five more, five more reps, okay? We'll go there, we'll go there. So what, what would you say is the most, impo most important part about the leg training? Well, everyone nowadays, first thing they do in squats is they lean forward. The nose comes this way. The nose should go this way this way like you're jumping in water not diving it's the most important thing everybody starts wrong starts incorrectly I made one suggestion to David just now within seconds he made the adjustment the technique has been bastardized to make it about hip flexors lower back I want the quads to be the prime mover even if you use less weight I don't care if you use the bar use your quads that's what people forgot about. but if you're a bodybuilder on the physique stage. Forget about the weight. Just make sure you use your legs. The prime mover is your quadriceps. Huh? Good. I can't manage 20, 30, 40 reps. I can't, it's, too, it's like I have a nervous breakdown. But I can manage five. So I just want you to do five. Another five without stopping the set. Another five without stopping the set. Second floor, please. Go out there and fail miserably. The weight on the ground, toss the weight, but achieve failure. Achieve failure. If you can do that, you can also win. If you can fail, you can also win. And all winners have failed. That's the goal here today, that last 5%. All right. Right. Yeah, keep using your legs. Keep using your legs. Two. Three. Five. Better rest. Okay, there's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Beautiful, David. Come on. There's ten. Yeah. Keep going. Come on. Now, come on. Uh, lightweight. Lightweight. Come on. Uh, you got two more for 15. Did. One more for 15. All right. Now. Now. Uh, Five more. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Come on, David. One. Drive! Excellent, excellent, great job. Yes, say yes. Two. Yes! Three more for 20. Three more. Drive! I'm strong, you're getting stronger. Come on! Stronger! One more for 20. Come on! Yes. Dig! Dig! Oh, you're strong. You got two more in you. You got two more in you.
Now, the only place to go from failure is to win. You have to achieve failure. You have to take it that far. Nobody wants to go that far. It's too scary. But you know something? I got news for you. That's where winning is. It always has been. Nothing's changed since the 70s. Nothing. Except people train not as hard. I think I I kind of lost the lost that uh, ability to go to 100 percent You know, I, I feel when I was younger, like when I was 20, I didn't think that much. And it was easier for me to go to maybe 99 percent I have all those doubts in my head sometimes doing leg training. Nothing compares to squats. You can do leg presses, but why? Why do an inferior movement? Why do a movement that looks good, but it produces hardly any results? I don't care how much weight you can use. I mean, there's a reason people don't squat. It's hard, it's hard. People don't want what's hard, they want what's easy, what looks showy. Forget about it. In fact, forget about the weight, just squat correctly. Like that is the secret. Absolutely. You can't let anybody tell you that you can't do something, but especially yourself. Most of us will tell ourselves, well, we can't, or we're less than, or we're not good enough, we're not worthy, they're better than us. <laughs> you, you gotta think a different way. Think about what you really want. What do you really want in life? It's not forever. Life is temporary. You might as well do exactly what you want to do in this life because pretty soon it's going to be your last day. You know? I mean, that, that's just the facts. So you might as well live every day as if it's your last day. And do what you really want to do in life. And love what you do. And uh, do what you love. If you want something bad enough and you have a dream, it will happen if you make it happen. You have to do the work, of course. You have to do the work. You just gotta believe it, put it in your head, and go move forward with that every day. Find that impossible thing. Do the impossible. You can do it. I'm, I'm certain you can. Uh, live for the impossible. Make it happen. One piece at a time. It will happen. Dreams do come true. If you really put your heart and soul into it, you will get it. Do what you love, love what you do. It's time to start living, folks.